Hi, I'm Eugene Izakevich, uh, founder and CEO of Brain Corporation in San Diego, California. And previously I spent, uh, all, most of my career was spent at the Neurosciences Institute in La Jolla, California, doing computational neuroscience. Why theory matters in neuroscience? Let's first look at the ex experimental neuroscience. What is it that people achieve by doing experiments? Basically, they prove uh, necessary conditions for certain phenomena. For example, you uh, block, use pharmacological blockers to block a current, and you show, look, the bursting or spiking disappears. Therefore, this current is uh, somehow necessary for, um, for your behavior. Uh, but it, I'm a mathematician. In math, we know that it's important to understand necessary and sufficient conditions for any phenomena. So neuroscience cannot answer the sufficient conditions, however, experimental neuroscience. However, theoretical neuroscience, theory can, because when you do a model, you say, hey, this is, those are my assumptions. And from these assumptions, if I put this current and that current, I can see spiking or bursting or some other phenomenon, or visual perception. So the theoretical neuroscience an, uh, uh, answers the sufficient condition. Um, and experimental neuroscience determines the necessary conditions. So together, you can find necessary and sufficient condition, which is exactly what you want to understand how the nature works. The most beneficial theory so far to experimental neuroscience and to neuroscience in general was the um, computational electrophysiology, uh, Hodgkin-Huxley type approach to uh, dynamics, to spiking and bursting in neurons. Uh, in fact, it was uh, the, the strength of this theory, the triumph of this theory is so big that right now, you cannot publish an uh, experimental paper in, uh, say, uh, doing some slice electrophysiology. You cannot uh, kind of, uh, investigate in currents or channels uh, responsible for cell dynamics. You cannot publish an experimental paper in any of the prestigious journals unless you supplement your experimental result uh, with uh, a model, a Hodgkin-Huxley type conductance-based model. So this theory achieved the highest level of acceptance in neuroscience in the sense that every biologist knows it and every biologist, uh, every reader demands uh, uh, experimental results to be supplemented by this kind of model, which is, by the way, also goes back to the necessary and sufficient conditions is that you, you do experiment, you block currents, you show this so certain things are necessary, then you do a model, you say that those currents are sufficient, you put it together, this is your proof, this is the strongest paper. There is a, there's a problem right now is that the theoristic and experimentalists don't work together as close as they should. And I would blame, uh, I would put a lot of blame on uh, theoreticians on that. Uh, often when we, and I'm a theoretician, when we publish papers, we're not explicit about our assumptions. Uh, we, uh, therefore, it's very difficult uh, for experimentalists to read our papers, to understand it and appreciate that those are the assumptions, this is the conclusion. If you believe the assumptions, this is the conclusion. If you don't believe the assumptions, okay, just you, this is, you don't have to believe the conclusion, but I mean, you, you know that this is a theoretical result and what its implications. Uh, quite often we hide this uh, in, uh, in our papers so that our papers become unreadable to experimentalists. Uh, also, many neuroscient computational neuroscientists, theoreticians, they're far away from biology. Everybody has to spend at least a year or a few years in a wet lab doing experiments so that we, uh, we, traditions learn more about the brain, but also learn more about uh, the animal behavior, uh, behavior of neurons. Uh, what, what are the, uh, so that when we read experimental papers and read their conclusions, we can also read it with this uh, kind of a grain of salt and understand that there are a lot of assumptions there, a lot of statistics that this clear-cut uh, results actually not that clear-cut, a lot of noise, so that we build better models and more relevant models to uh, to the neuroscience, to the experimental neuroscience community.